Well, good afternoon, everybody. Darren Saul, your host of Playing With Perspective, the suspended animation podcast. I have the lovely Karen Chaston here with me for episode 103. How are you, Karen? Good, thank you. And congratulations, 103 episodes. Yes. That's I'm amazing, very, Darren. Work the century. I'm very happy. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> So for everybody out there, we're going to be chatting all about the power of loss. And Karen has a great story to tell. And she's been working with both individuals and corporates on how loss affects them. So fascinating content that I'm really looking forward to getting into. But for everybody out there who doesn't know who Karen is, Karen Chaston is a business owner, beyond loss expert, author, and international keynote speaker who has shared the stage with Marianne Williamson, Jamie Lee Curtis, Valerie Harper, and Dr. Ellie Drake. In her corporate career, Karen was the chief financial officer of a publicly listed company and a senior manager for more than 25 years. She still maintains her CPA status. Karen's first-hand experience assisted her in creating the Beyond Loss retreats and programs delivered physically and virtually which demonstrate the correlations between loss and all areas of your life. When individuals embrace these concepts, they will easily move beyond any kind of loss and create a better everyday life. When companies embrace these concepts, they unlock the people and profits connection, providing tangible solutions that will help them to make the best possible product, offer the best possible customer experience, and build the strongest possible company. Her motto is, life is too short to be suffering from any kind of loss. Unwrap the gift this has brought and then design a life that you live and love. So welcome, Karen Chaston. Thank you, Darren. It's a Darren and Karen show. The Kaza and Kaza show on Friday exactly. afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so Karen, where did you get to meet um, Marianne Williamson, Jamie Lee Curtis, I know. all these famous people. Tell us about that. Oh, my God. It was so cool. It was just after I left. Well, actually, I knew I was leaving because I uh, chose redundancy from my corporate life about 15 months after my son passed. Oh. And I knew I was going to be doing something different, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to be doing. And I had to work out like six months notice. So at that stage, I had this Um, I was connected to Dr. Ellie Drake um, through Braveheart Women and she uh, created this amazing community and I went to uh, Rise was the name of her four-day event in 2012 and then in 2013 I went there again and I was on the stage. I had 15 minutes and all of these amazing ladies were also on the stage over the four days and I have to say Jamie Lee Curtis is the most amazing lady you will ever meet. I had the privilege of having our photo taken with her and I had on this necklace that sort of (laughs) came down here and as you walked, it was sort of jingle jangle and go everywhere. So I walked up to have my photo with her and she went, wait a minute. And she turned to me, she straightened my necklace and she said, okay, Karen's ready now, we'll take the photo. Wow, how cool is that? How many Hollywood stars (laughs) would do that? How cool is that? Well she done. was the most amazing lady and she was literally, just ask me anything, Ellie. Just ask me anything. And she, well, she was open book on everything. Whereas the year before, Helen Hunt was there and Helen Hunt was, don't ask me anything. Right. So now are you Facebook friends with Jamie Lee Curtis now? No, I'm not. <laughs> but maybe I will reach out because I've still got, I've got her photo and of her and me on my Facebook because wow. she was just amazing. But it was such a great event. And yep. to be able to talk in front of 1,200 women for 15 minutes, and this was before I was even professionally trained to be a speaker like I am now. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was amazing. It was so cool. Well yeah. done. What a great story. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Uh, now, I'm really excited to get into this content because I know you have a, a very – um, touching story and a, and, a, and a very important story to tell. So I've heard you say that there are 40 different loss events that can affect our lives. Yeah. And that now is a time for people to get comfortable with loss. 
So can yeah. you elaborate on this and maybe just give us a bit more insight into that? Yeah, well, when I first read that, I just thought there's no way is there 40 different loss events because most people think, you know, oh, yeah, death of a loved one, you know, death of, you know, this, that, all that sort of stuff. But no, it goes so much further than death. You know, the six most common ones are death, divorce, job loss, your health, your wealth and your pets. Yeah. But in this pandemic that we're in, That's right. all of the minor ones are coming to the forefront. You know, things like loss of freedom, loss of yep. choice, loss of status, yep. changing work conditions, yep. changing loss, loss of seeing other human beings. Yeah, like, like changing social activities. Yeah. And there's so many of these minor ones. You know, I was just talking to a lady, miscarriage. Um, but also pregnancy can be classed as a loss. True. You sort of go, but wait a minute, pregnancy is a joyous occasion. And it is a joyous occasion, but you're moving on. So you're losing your lifestyle that you had. That's true. So it's about us recognising that loss is change. Like, so we like to say normal life, even though yeah. I'm pretty sure there is no such thing as a normal life. Like That's you right. and I would totally have different versions of what a normal life is. That's right. So it's about us saying, okay, I am different today because of this event, which is probably a loss event, than I was yesterday. Yep. So I'm never going to go back, but I am going to go forward. But if I'm grieving and suffering, especially if it's been something really traumatic, yep. how can I move on? Yep. And we can move on. And that's what I teach people. Love and it's a really easy process and i love the way you said loss is change that's so that's a great way to look at it it is and we all know that everything's going to change like if it wasn't we'd all be 30 forever that's right wouldn't we <laughs> i'd have a bit more hair than i do now <laughs> exactly. there's a bit of loss there <laughs> exactly <laughs> um so why is loss so misunderstood is it just because we don't want to deal with it we don't want to internally reflect on it we try and drown it out why yep. is loss so well understood? it goes back centuries and centuries and centuries probably thousands of centuries we don't we didn't want to think about it we yep. didn't want to deal with it we didn't even want to talk about it like no one knows what to say well yeah. sorry very few people know what to say right. when loss occurs to either us or our friends or our loved ones yep. so we've pushed it to the side and it's like no Let's all just be in love and good times. Let's not think about the sad times. Let's not even like think about the fact that none of us have an expiry date on our birth certificate. Yeah, yeah. Let's just, you know, carry on like that. Whereas there's this beautiful country and it's called Bhutan. Bhutan. Right? Have you heard of Bhutan? Yes, I have. Yeah. And they are classed as the happiest people in the world That's right. happiest country in the world and it's in between india and china yep. and it's a little bit like tibet yeah. they've got and that special emperor yeah. oh, do they? i think it's an em it's an emperor that governs the place like some okay probably something like but, that but do you know what they all do from a very young age no they meditate on their death oh my lord <laughs> but they see it sounds morbid in the west but when you think about it, because they meditate, they're comfortable around it. Yep. And it so gives they're you, actually gives them more present. Yeah. So they're more present in today, yep. Yep. which is why they're the most happiest country in the world because yep. they're not so they're true. not here in death because yep. they know what's going to happen. Yep. And they they learn to value all the amazing little things that happen throughout the day because they have a exactly different way of and allow all the little crap that we yep. can fixate on to just. Yep. Past. Yeah, what's that phrase? Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't yes, you know. exactly. So that's what I do as I help people to get comfortable around loss. Yep. And to and once you're comfortable around it and you know how to move beyond it, well, A, you don't fear it anymore. And it's just like a maths equation, right? Yeah. When you know the maths equation, you know you can solve it, the problem. You just go, oh, okay, that's right. I learned that. Yeah, this is what I do. A, B, C, D. Right. So yep. that's yep. all you do. When yep. loss comes to visit again, it will. Um, you yeah. just go, oh, wait a minute. What Karen say? Yeah, that's right. This is the process. Right. Done. Okay, I've moved on. I'm okay. back to love now. All right. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a bit about 
you know, your journey with loss, how you dealt with it, and how did you come up with this equation? Yeah. Okay. So, as you said in the intro, I was a CFO of a public listing company, and I was a bloody good accountant, I have to say. I was, <laughs> I've never seen anyone use Excel like I did. And, and I really loved my job. And I was very busy in my job, too busy in my job, to be quite honest. Yeah. But I was happy with my life. I was always angry in retrospect, but that's all in retrospect yeah. um, or as we've moved on. But anyway, back in 2011, 10th of July, 2011, my husband woke up Sunday morning thinking we were going to have a lazy day at home. Mm. But within 15 minutes, we were had the paramedics at our back door looking at our beautiful son, Dan, who was 27, lying in the fetal position, saliva coming out of our mouth. And they literally, after we called them, they had, they just walked in and then they looked straight at me and they just went, I'm sorry, madam, he's dead. And I'm going, no, 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 no. You haven't even looked at him. Go back, go back, go back. <sighs> and you know, he was lying in the fetal position and we had turned him over, but his legs had stayed up. So I sort of knew, well, that's not good. And I was going, no, 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 no. You know, you watch too much NCIS. No, 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 everything's fine, everything's fine. But unfortunately, he had passed away um, several hours earlier. And what had happened was he had gone out with his mates. Yes, he had drunk too much, but that wasn't what had killed him. When he came home, his, him and his girlfriend had gone out separately and she had left the key out for him. For some reason, he left his key at home. And when he came home, he fell over, trying to pick the key up, everything shook up. And then when he went to catch his breath, he just couldn't catch it. Oh. Um, so he passed away. And, and what had happened was um, at the autopsy the next day, they said to us that his lungs were so bad that if he had smoked full on for say 10, 15 years, because he was only 27, he couldn't have done a quarter of the damage of the lungs and he was only a social smoker. Oh so God. he, you know, he'd had, he'd been in Scotland two years before and he had pneumonia and spent a week in hospital. So whether it was from that, I don't know. Um, he also had a brain tumor, which was benign, which we didn't even know about. So he, he wasn't as healthy as what we had thought he had been. That's terrible. But, you know, and at that stage, I knew nothing about grief and loss. And I just did what most people do. Just keep busy, just give it time, just, you know, move on, just do all those sort of cliches that everyone says to you. So I literally went straight back to work the day after his funeral. And I worked more, ate more, drank more, and I just carried on. And, and I now know that Dan's passing was meant to have been my wake up call. It was meant to help me to leave corporate, to get onto the journey that I'm on now. And I, I firmly believe that like Dan is constantly with me. He's always in my head, planting these ideas and stuff. And I firmly believe that he's on this journey with me and he's helping me to help other people to move beyond loss. And because I ignored it, and just kept trying to go back to normal, I um, had to have another loss event occur. Oh, oh my God. And, I, and I'm pretty sure if I hadn't woken up after that one, I would have had more and more. Oh my and more. God. Because, you know, life is, it's sort of taking you on this journey to where you're meant to be and to the things that you were all meant to do in this lifetime. So 15 months after um, Dan passed, the company I was working with was merging with another. And they said to me very early on in the merger process, Karen, you're not going to be the CFO in the new company, but you'll be doing everything you're doing now plus more. We really want you to come with us. Um, and I just went, yeah, sure. I don't really care what my title is. Typical female. I don't care what my <laughs> title is. That's fine. Until they gave me my contract. Uh -huh. And then I cared. Because I looked at the salary and I went, I can't do this job part-time. And I went, it's not part-time. Oh and I said, God. I went, this salary's part-time. 
because it was two thirds of my current salary. And they didn't tell you that up front. They just gave you the no, and they and they kept delaying and delaying and delaying, giving it as they picked my brains. And I was angry for about a day and a half. And I very, very quickly came out of it because I began to realise, you know what? You're only there for the money yeah. and you're not healthy. Your relationships are, are not ideal. You know, you're eating too much. You're definitely drinking too much. I was drinking a bottle of wine a night. I don't even drink now. Wow. I, the last drink I had was the 30th of December, 2018. Oh, my God. And I don't even miss it. Oh I don't God. even miss it. Wow. And that's so what I'm saying. It, because I was drinking out of habit but for stress yeah and i didn't even realize how stressed i was so it was the greatest gift they gave to me and i really knew it very early on and i did the right thing i worked out my notice i probably shouldn't have um but anyway i did the right thing by me and but in that time i knew very quickly that there was a new path for me and i wasn't really sure what it was and through Braveheart Women, I became a life coach. Lovely. And then I thought I was going to be working with women. I really thought I was going to help women to be women and not become men in that corporate space as I had done. But it just didn't grow. And then I had this lady who was helping me to market myself. And I had this, um, you know, I love this. I had this chat with a lady from Macquarie Bank, not to work with her, but just for her to chat and give me suggestions on how to get into where I wanted to get. And about five minutes into the conversation, I had this awakening. I went, oh, my God, I don't want to work with these women. I don't want to be around these women. Yeah. They know everything. Yeah. Who am I to tell them that the life that they're leading isn't ideal? Um, and I, they are me. They are who I used to be. Yeah. And there's no way I would have listened to me <laughs> when I was that person. I like, yep. And I just went, my God, what am I going to do? I've, you know, been spending a few years. And I've been, but I've been building a lot of collateral, which I use all of it now. And, um, and then after it, I said to the lady, I told her my realisation. But I have to say, the lady from Macquarie from Bank was the most beautiful lady you've ever met. But it was just her energy. I just got it and I just went, oh, my God. But she was nice. Like, she didn't say or do anything wrong to make me just have that realisation. It was just like, oh, my God, this is all wrong. Yeah. So then the lady said to me, look, Karen, I don't know you all that well. We've only, you know, been associated for a few months. She says, but why aren't you helping people with loss? The way you moved on from your son's passing, the way that you moved on from you know being redundant the way that things come to you and you just do it and i went yeah i was told that really early on but i was like no those people are too sad i don't want to be around them but by then i had grown so much and i had already started to delve into loss and it was just like yeah so that's what i did i did yeah. delved in for even further and some of the and well some of the programs in my five-step process the last step is pivot. So all of the stuff that I was using for the women is my pivot stage. So right. nothing was wasted. That's I've right. just brought the forefront into the programs that I offer. And it's just amazing because I love being able to help people to stop grieving and suffering. And it's a really easy process that it would have been ideal if we'd all learnt it at school. Awesome. We might not have valued it then, but it would have been like that maths equation. Yep. We would have gone, oh, yeah, what was that equation again? How do we do it? Oh, yeah, right. Let's follow that steps. Easy. I love it. And so I want to definitely get into that equation, yep. the famous Karen Chaston equation. But before we do that, I just kind of want to get your insight into what are the differences between how loss is implicated for individuals and how loss is implicated for companies or corporate. Okay. So we, individuals, that, that... obviously, we grieve and suffer, right? And because people are not comfortable around helping people, I found people will give you a week right. for any loss. Mm -hmm. And then after that, aren't you over that yet? Why are yeah. you still talking about it? Yeah. Like, uh, can't you move on? Yeah, What's wrong with you? Well, easy, why are you still yeah. there? Like, you can relate, can't you? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure everyone listening can relate to that. 
So yeah. what it is, is we have people coming to work who are suffering in silence, right? Gotcha. And because most leaders really do not value their employees as their most valuable asset. Yep. Right? They don't care. That's right. I have to say the truth. I've been talking too much. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> good. yeah, I totally agree with you because you know we all we just we just want everything to run smoothly and all right, <coughs> give you a week off, Monday, back up and running. We don't want to lose any productivity. We've got deadlines to meet, we've got projects to execute. Let's go. Come yeah. on, no more. Enough. Otherwise, I'll send you back to HR. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and because they're all so uncomfortable and don't know how to do a lot, I don't want to ask Harry about, you know, this or that or whatever's happening with his wife or his, you know, family or, you know, I don't really care if they're divorced. I only care about what they do from nine to five. Or and nine that's to actually five. a really good point as well because in the corporate world, we're <laughs> almost too scared to overstep that mark because there can be implications, you know, for all sorts of issues when you go get too personal. Exactly. So it, we have to be so delicate in what we say and what we do and how we react because, you know, we can, people can come and throw all sorts of lawsuits at us for no reason. So even it, that's a bit of a problem. It, but is it? Like, is it, or is that just a perspective? Like, Maybe I it's just totally a understand yeah, Maybe that it's just it a is a problem at the moment, but we've created that problem because mm -hmm. The, the fact that we have even called empathy and all of those sort of skills as soft skills. That's true. Like that in itself, it's downgraded them so much. But now is the time that it's really coming out that they're actually essential skills. Oh, absolutely. They're all becoming emotional intelligence and empathy and soft skills are becoming more important than anything else. Exactly. And that's what this pandemic has actually done for us all. For help us to actually realise it's time to start treating our employees as our most valuable asset. Definitely. And so that includes let's going face beyond it. just the... How do we look after level? our assets? Yep. You know, we maintain them, we invest in them. We make sure that they're all running at their peak performance. Just like, just by it's saying right. all that, you can clearly see, oh my God. Yeah, it's like how, how if you have a Formula One value? car, you make sure you, you check it, you use the right oil, you have the right tyres, you... You know, you've got a whole team around you to service that. You know, we should do the same with, that, with all our employees. Like we're not, and we see our employees. We see the crap that they're eating for lunch. We see them going down at 3 p.m. We see that they're not fueling themselves properly. Sure, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that any employer should actually tell someone how to eat, yeah. but maybe they can guide them. Yeah. You know, have healthy food in the lunchroom. Have, have water available, like great water to drink. Have breaks. Yes. Actually stand up every, you know, 55 minutes. Let's all do jumping jacks. Let's all have a laugh. Yes. Let's all do something just to re-energise ourselves. Guess what? The next 55 minutes, I'll be a lot more productive if you hadn't have done that five minutes. You know, just let's get up and just do it. Let's, let's all tell a joke, you know. No dad jokes. Really? Like. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So you kind of work with individuals to... Yeah. Allow them to deal with loss, but also you work with corporates to let to help them really start bridging the gap, getting a little bit more personal and yes. helping their employees deal with loss and guide them through that. Uh, and exactly. Through that, um, Not only on what to say, but also to, for them to actually understand that the more they get into their employees and understand them. And I love to work with um, Maslow's needs. Right now, Maslow had them as a triangle. I don't have mine as a triangle. I have it as a staircase. Okay. Good. Right. And the reason I have it as a staircase is so that you can clearly see what step all of your employees are currently on. Okay. Do you want to maybe right. give us a quick rundown into the, your your hierarchy? Oh well, uh, well, it's it's, it's the same sort of philosophy, right? But I'm just saying when you can see that your employees are not having their social needs met. What can we do in the workplace to ensure that they are? And I'm only talking about in the workplace, yep. okay? If they're not having their esteem needs met, right? If they're just stored in survival, just having their physiological needs met, which is, you know, their salary and stuff, yep. or they don't even feel secure. And let's face it, a lot of employees don't feel safe in the workplace to voice their true opinion. That's true, especially right now. <laughs> yeah. 
But why not? They're the ones that have the great ideas. Yep. They're the ones that are the coal face. And if you ask them and involve them so that they could actually see their fingerprint on the design, guess what? Love They're going to run with it. They're yeah. going to make sure it's successful. As opposed to, why didn't they ask me? I could have told them this wouldn't work. <laughs> now, how many employees have said that when you introduce a new procedure? Very true. Get them involved. Yep. So because true. they have great ideas. And leaders sometimes feel that they're the only ones that have all the ideas yep. so that's what i help people do so i help them to understand their people and i also because of I'm a, i was an ex-cfo um i understand profits i understand yep. how to generate more profits so once you bring your people in and then you just automatically know how to in increase your profits they all go hand in hand that's right yep. and that's what i help them do and to be honest, when I was a CFO, I wish I had this understanding then. Wow. Because there is no way they would have turned around to me and said, Karen, you won't be CFO in the new company. That's right. Not that's that right. I want to be in that role anyway now. Salary. Yeah, but it's, but that's the thing though, is we just, we obviously don't know what we don't know, but it's a different perspective. It's a new perspective. And we're in 2020. It's time for us to stop having these, you know, 100-year-old perspective on this is how you run a company and you just treat your employees like they are replaceable yeah. and if they don't want it, someone else will do it. Love it. Yeah, so true. It's like a, and that's I, what I do. I do oh, both of those. Okay. And Thanks. they feed in one into the other because obviously when I go into companies, individuals will come to me and go, look, you know, these are my little losses. My, you know, and by the time you're 40, You'll have probably three or four that you still haven't completed the emotional journey on. And that's what I help you to do. Okay. Lovely. And so how do you go about that process? Okay. So the five step process. process. <laughs> so the first step is to stop. Okay. I know. And none of us stop. Just keep busy. Keep going. Give it time. All Literally. that sort of stuff. Stop. Take a breath. Yeah. So the first step is exactly. Because when you take that conscious, loving breath, yep. you actually fill yourself up with all of the love, all of the wisdom, and your power. Yep. So that you actually can go, right, this is what's happened. What does it mean to me now and in the future? Nice. And then the second step is to accept. Okay? Because when you accept, you take responsibility for your role in what has happened, mm -hmm. okay? Because there's two people in every relationship and it's about us understanding what has happened for the length of that relationship. Yep. And, it, you know, it could be over because of death or divorce or job loss, whatever the reason that it's over, you know, could be your health. Yep. It's about you taking responsibility. Well, you know what? I didn't really look after my health, did I? And you know, it like takes a little while to get to that acceptance. It yeah, but it doesn't have happen. to. It doesn't have to because you once you do the stopping, that's when you start to actually do a fair bit of it, gotcha. right? So then you can come to acceptance. Okay. Because once you come to acceptance, you can then be very active in the way that you move forward. Until you get to acceptance, you're in avoidance. True. And you're going to use all of the non-coping strategies yep. to get through that. Yep. And like work, no wonder. Food, alcohol. Exactly. Milk. That's why we had thriving um, pharmaceutical industries, alcohol industries, why the suicide rate is so high. Yep. Because we're all in avoidance. Because accepting is hard. Yeah, sure. Facing your feelings is not easy. And mm -hmm. facing the... Why did I do that? Why didn't I do that? Why did I say that? Why didn't I do that? Why did we avoid this? Why, why, why did we postpone this? You know, yep. there's so many questions and it's actually all going around inside of you and your unconscious, I call it the unconscious uh, mind loss loop. Yep. And right. all of those questions are going around and around and around and around and around in your body and flicking up all of these emotions every time you get to a different one that we go, oh, this is painful. Wow. It's because we're not even aware of it. 
but through the next step, which is the step three, when we actually really deep dive into it so that we can gain all of the insights into what has happened. And it is a deep dive into it. Okay. Because once we deep dive into it, we can actually realise that we, every relationship has hopes, dreams and aspirations. It's about us recognising what are they. Yep. Yep. Realising they're not going to happen the way we thought they are, but they can still happen just differently. Exactly. So that helps you. And then through there, you also will come to a, a stage where you can come up with a list of course you've deep dived into yourself and a, a list where you realize that you'd like to apologize for something, mm. forgive for something mm. and to acknowledge. I like that. It's beautiful. You That's never send the letter to the person if they're alive though, but you actually deep dive into it. Right. And then the fourth step is you complete. So because you've gathered all of that information together over the first three steps yep. and the fourth step, you then put it into a final process where you complete it. Yep. Now, once you've completed the emotional relationship, right? Because there's three aspects to every relationship. There's a physical, yep. which is the way we hang out together, the things we do, the things we say, and the things that the way we touch each other. Yep. And then, of course, the emotional relationship is all encompassing of all of our feelings: the good, the bad, the glad, and the sad. And the third aspect is the spiritual one. It's like that intangible thing. We know we're connected. That metaphysical. We don't know thing. why we're so connected. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So when the, the loss event occurs, it's the physical relationship that ends. The emotional and the spiritual will live on forever. Mm. And because we don't deal with the emotional, that's what causes us to grieve and suffering. So when we complete the emotional relationship, we can have a healthy emotional relationship moving forward. Sure, at times we'll get sad, but that's completely different to grieving and suffering. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Like I get sad, you know. Dan, Dan was a twin and he has an older brother. And Dan's twin is now married, has a son, Raphael. I would have loved that for Dan. You know, it's really sad that he can't go on. He, he ended, you know, his life ended when he was only 27. Mm. But... You know, that's what it is all about. But I know he's still around. Yep. But sadness is completely different. You know, it's not as though... I've, I've met women who have lost their child and 20 years later, they still cannot mention their name. They, um, you know, still will cry. And you just think, it's really sad. Like, you're, you're sort of stopped living your life yep. at the same time your child did. And, and I'm, you know, I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying... If they had, they, for me, my perspective, you honour your child more when you actually live and love your life. Yep, yep. Yeah. Wow. So that's, and then the last step, as I said earlier, is the pivot stage. Okay, so and that's why I called good. my business Live Love by Design, because then we design the life that you want to live and love moving forward, not just overall, but we deep dive into all areas of your life. Cool. So, yeah. So, so the five steps was first one, stop. Take a breath. Yeah. Yep. Maybe just give us those five quick points. Stop. Take okay. A so it's stop, accept, <clears throat> identify, complete, pivot. Gotcha. Now, now I, I had stop and pivot long before this pandemic. And it's quite interesting. Yeah, exactly. But that's exactly what's happening <laughs> exactly. right at the moment. Everyone had to stop. And then now it's like, let's all pivot. Yeah. yeah. So it's really, really interesting yeah. because. The, it's like the world has told us, you know what? You were all so busy. You were never, ever going to stop. So I'm stopping you. Yeah. So you must be quite busy helping individuals and business owners uh, deal with yes this and no. I could be, I'm always happy to be busier. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. Um, I am because I took, I took my uh, three-day physical uh, Beyond Lost Retreat online. Nice. So I love that. But it, it is about getting it more out there and um, doing it. But I, I love it. I just love the fact that people, it's time for people to know how to move beyond loss. Yep. It's time for us to all get comfortable around it, yep. to know what to say, to know what to do, and yep. to allow yourself to think about it. Will we all start meditating on our death like the Butanese people? Probably not. <laughs> but do you know what? Why not? 
but it's a it's a great gives you a great sense of perspective absolutely it does oh. and i think we all need to get more into the present because that's all we have anyway definitely, isn't it definitely definitely wow we Wow, that's incredible. And how long did it take you to develop these five steps or did they come almost just naturally to you? No, they didn't come naturally to me and it's through a lot of different things that I've done over the years that I've bought a bit from here and a bit from there. Um, I, I, got, I, I got a fair bit of it from the Grief Recovery Institute that's in America. Um, not that I've done their programs, but it's just I've got a research there and I've got more things here and radical forgiveness. I've, you know, the Ho'oponopono prayer. I've got so many things that I've brought into the, um, my online and, and physical retreats is because when I've learnt new modalities, new ways of doing things, I'm like, wow, I would have loved to have known that. And it just sort of all fits together. So, it's like, you know, like a little bit from here and a little bit from there, a little bit from all over the place. Because let's face it, there's nothing original. Everything's there for us. It's just the way that... You how sort we, of how we package it and make it our own, and how you put the recipe together. Exactly, how you put it together, and as long as it's a nice, clear, and simple and concise process, it is. I'd say great, I love it. Makes sense, and it, it's very logical. It sounds logical to me. And the best part about it, Darren, is that when I work one to one with my um, because because my online retreat, you can do it by yourself, or you can do it in a group, or you can do it one to one with me. When you work one to one with me, it's five 90 minute sessions. Right. That's it. That's it. Sure, they do a lot of work in between each session, yeah. but it's, that's how easy it is. Like, you know, these people who are suffering for 20 years, it's like, well, wait a minute, you could be over it in five weeks. Right. Have you got some amazing feedback from people after that five weeks? Unbelievable five feedback. Wow. They're like, oh my God, you have saved my life. But the, who they are at the beginning of the process, to who they are at the end, it's just like, oh my God. And you can see that probably in their body, posture. Oh, it's their everything. They stand taller, they smile, they you know, not so hunched over because they're not carrying the weight. We release that weight that, you know, people have been carrying for ages. You know, I've had so many people come to me thinking that it's the one that they're going to work on is their recent divorce or recent separation. But when we do the process, they go, no, no, no. Through, okay. I've realised <laughs> I've got to go back to, you know, I, my mother didn't love me the way I wanted yeah. her to. If, right. Because that has made me make choices all the way along Absolutely. that have led to more suffering and yeah. grieving. Absolutely. Yeah, it's an amazing process. Absolutely. And I've been talking to a lot of fascinating and very um, experienced mindset coaches and, you know, mental analysts and, and psychotherapists, and they all talk about, the fact that we uh, we can rewire our mental pathways we're yep. so plastic the neuroplasticity yeah that's something that we have to learn to do otherwise we just keep running those old operating systems oh patterns yep. yeah but you know there's a lot in us that you know not even isn't even ours and it's about understanding that our beliefs whose whose beliefs are they are they ours yeah, or yeah. are they our parents or our teachers yeah. or this or that and that's part of the process you know in the identify stage is that we we look at what are your beliefs yeah and, where you know, they and are they from? serving you yeah. and and most of the time everyone goes they're not serving me but they're my belief and i'm going yeah right do a little bit of research you'll find just as much that proves it wrong as proves it right yeah, yeah i love that so once belief. you figure that out let's create a new belief yeah belief is such an interesting word and interesting concept you can you know yeah you can play with it from a million perspectives it is exactly and it's like well that doesn't work for me i'm That's sick right. of carrying this belief that i can you know so many women i, can, oh, I can't lose weight that yeah. won't work for me or i yeah. i can't have money or all this sort of stuff I'm like no, let's throw that out yep. that's not working <laughs> oh love it well done karen that's been fascinating um, Thank to, you, hear, Darren. to hear the story and to hear how you develop these five steps yeah. If, if people want to get in touch with you to learn more about how they can work with you and do one of your programs, what's the yep. best way for them to contact you? So I have a couple of websites. I have karenchaston.com yep. and livelovebydesign.com. Nice. And actually, if you go to the karenchaston.com, there's a couple of ebooks on there at the moment, okay. which are beyond uh, life after loss and life after divorce and life after redundancy. So, you know, download the books and have a quick look. And then from there, 
you can um, get in contact with me really easy. Or, you know, my email address is really simple, karen at karenchaston.com.au. So my websites are only .com, whereas my email address is .com.au. And you're on, uh, you're on Facebook and LinkedIn as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All there. Yep. Totally there. All, everywhere. All over social media. I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How could you not be with what I do? <laughs> well done. Well, Karen, yeah. thank you so much for coming in and uh, joining you, us Karen. at Suspended Animation Studios. It's been a fascinating discussion. Yeah. What would you like to leave the audience with on this Friday afternoon for them to reflect on, on the, over the yep. week? Life is way too short for anyone to be grieving and suffering. Unwrap the gift that the loss of Bantam brought you and design a life that you'll live and love each and every day. Love it. What beautiful, wise words from Karen Chaston. So thank you so much for coming on the show. To all the audience out there, we hope that you really learned a lot from that. And I'm sure that if you want to talk to Karen about doing any programs, you'll learn even more. Um, yeah. but everybody have a fantastic weekend. And we'll, yeah. see, very, we'll see you back next week with some great guests and some great shows. Bye for Thanks, now. Karen. Pleasure. Thanks, Karen.